WWE 24 WrestleMania Orlando. This is the documentary about WrestleMania 33, which took place last year. And this debuted uh, immediately after the Royal Rumble, which was a bit of a surprise. And expected to debut this episode on that night with so much going on. But uh, this is the episode about last year's WrestleMania. So the uh, documentary ep- opens up on the roller coaster. They showed the New Day with Lana on the roller coaster. I think they also showed Kathy Kelly. And, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, the whole theme of last year's show was the ultimate thrill ride. They never even said WrestleMania 33. They always said the ultimate thrill ride. And the whole the commercials were all like roller coasters and stuff. So they're doing this bit on the woman. They're showing uh, a girl dressed up as Asuka, a girl dressed up as, as Sasha Banks, meeting Sasha, a girl dressed up as Alexa Bliss, meeting Alexa. Now, the documentary, I think, is going to uh, shift a lot to uh, Naomi, who won the title in her hometown of Orlando. So I think she deserves a large part of this documentary. So again, they were showing a lot of um, Naomi uh, going into the show at Access. Now they're going into the Hall of Fame. Then they go to John Cena and Nikki Bella, and they show John Cena actually inducting Kurt Angle first at the Hall of Fame, and then they go to the Mania the next day, and they show uh, the thing is Cena and Nikki, and then they go to Miz and Maurice and talk about the real-life tensions. I wish they would have gotten into it more. I think there was a lot of stuff with uh, Nikki, you know, screwing over Maurice, um, Nikki and Brie, and, you know, keeping them off of Total Bellas. I think some of the other women, like Kelly Kelly, um, also got, uh, and uh, Maria Canellis. For sure, I think a lot of them got screwed by it, and all, a lot of them were pissed off at uh, the Bella. So I think that was actually a real thing. Uh, they show Alexa Bliss for a while, and uh, she's really excited to be there. And uh, again, I've always thought you know she seems like a really nice person who uh, obviously is completely different from her character. Um, one thing I've been noticing, you know, they show her walking around this, and actually before that, they showed her talking uh, about WrestleMania 30, last time she was there when she was part of Triple H's entrance with uh, Sasha and Charlotte, and uh, one thing I noticed, I mean, this WrestleMania opinion had the greatest set of all time, was it the best WrestleMania of all time, but in terms of the set, it was a fucking monster, it was just a masterpiece, there's no way I don't think they can top at WrestleMania 34 because it's in a dome, the roller coaster and the entrance ramp and that thing above the entrance, that like tunnel or hard to explain, and it was incredible they go to big show then they go to charlotte and they're talking about uh, wrestlemania 24 they also t- had this thing with kevin owens and big cast all talking about wrestlemania 24 which was nine years ago so nice tribute to that show which was um which was actually really really good wrestling wrestlemania 33 wasn't on no nowhere near as good as 24 um in my opinion i thought 24 is actually a really good wrestlemania then we just went to the undertaker breaking character which was just crazy it was nuts i mean that guy never breaks character until he was the American Bass. And one thing he's talking about is all the struggles he had. Um, they showed a lot. They showed this one footage of him and Michelle McClure going on a golf cart. I don't know if that was WrestleMania 30 when he looked in the worst shape. No, that was when he went to the hospital. It could have been 31 or 32 when he looked horrible and him struggling to walk up. Man, that guy was just in horrible shape. And he's talking about all the, you know, he wants to give the fans the best Undertaker possible. I thought that was actually a really, I actually, really, that, that was awesome. So you can talk like that. They show Nikki walking around the set. And um, now the things last year that happened. They show Seth uh, going through the ramp. Um, it's lying, lying on fire. Now they're talking about Roman Reigns. And they're really talking about the match with The Undertaker. And uh, they go back to uh, they show Cena just goofing around backstage. Eh, I don't know. Uh, again, they start, now they're going to the show and they're showing the matches going down. Uh, one thing I noticed is that they have to use this tent as the dressing room. I'm thinking to myself, these wrestlers, the, what they were at last year compared to what they are at uh, the following year, you know, at 32, um, they're in fucking Jerry World, Cowboy Stadium, AT&T Stadium, this fucking thing. It looks like a damn spaceship on the ground and next year they're in like this you know, dump of a stadium road. Citrus Bowl is not a nice stadium, and you know the the entrance is right outside. It's like there's almost no. They have to use tents, and man, what they were in last year, it's uh, quite the drop off. Now they're doing almost a rundown of the show. Um, they show uh, New Day opening the show, and now it's AJ and Shane. They cue to the Hardy Boys and how they had to sneak into the uh, stadium, um, and they're showing them uh, these pink hoodies, which was funny. They showed some highlights of AJ and Shane. Have, AJ wasn't featured too much in this documentary, just saying he was going to steal a show, and that match was definitely the best uh, match of that night. They quickly roll through Owens and Jericho, it's probably because Vince hated that match, which I still don't understand. Now they're going to the Raw Women's title match. 
Charlotte was featured on uh, this uh, documentary, but there was not nothing from uh, Bailey Sa- or Sasha at all. Uh, there was almost a little stuff from Sasha, but nothing at all from Bailey. Now they're talking about the ladder match, and it was funny. Um, they're showing uh, the, all the hitter team's entrance, and they don't even want to have the camera on Enzo anymore. It's like he never even existed. They didn't even show him at all next to Big Cass and whatever. You know, that pop just blows me away still. It's almost been a year, and that pop is just unbelievable. When the Hardys returned, the New Day introduced them. The music hits. You can just see the fans lose their shit, and I lost my shit when I saw that. I marked the fuck out. Such an unbelievably awesome WrestleMania moment. That was just incredible. That return was just insane. Just an awesome moment. Seeing them come back and win the tag titles and the crowd go awesome. Such an awesome moment. I loved it. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was probably the best part of the show, uh, seeing their epic return. You only have both guys saying it's the best moment of the match, saying it's the best moment of his career. Um, just an awesome, crazy moment. I loved it. Now they're talking about the SmackDown Women's uh, Championship, and uh, the focus is there's uh, they're talking uh, about Alexa Bliss and uh, Naomi in this uh, part. And uh, they show Naomi winning today, which is another great moment. Uh, the match wasn't that good, though. It was like a train. It wasn't a horrible match. It was just they, they had like five minutes. I, I remember actually watching WrestleMania. Um, they waited to position this documentary to make you think this match was the, in the middle of the card. That match was like the second last match. And I remember thinking, oh, it's getting cut for sure. Uh, I think they went after Goldberg and Brock or uh, Orton and one of those matches. Yeah, before a take on range, I'm thinking to myself, oh, there's no way. I mean, that match is getting cut, and they have a match, and the entrances are really quick, and they have like they wrestled like five minutes as fast as they could. They did so many spots. Was, they're doing the best they can in five minutes, and Naomi uh, submits Bliss quickly, and uh, Naomi won the belt, which is a great moment for Naomi. I really liked that moment. I thought it was a great moment for her. And, you know, it's one of those good feel-good stories, someone who's been in the company for that long and have that cool moment in your hometown, and uh, for once, WWE does does you know had someone win in their hometown and it actually got naomi a lot over after winning that match wow now they're going to the miz and uh marisa against cena and nikki part before i talk about the match i loved how the fans booed al roker then cena comes out with the the match and um and again they don't talk too much about in depth about the heat but there was definitely a lot of heat between um not so much between the miz but definitely uh, maurice and uh nikki then uh, the next big moment, you know, when, when I think of this WrestleMania, I think of three things. Undertaker's supposed retirement, which was just awesome. Not that he retired, like, the way he went out. Then uh, the Hardy Boys returned, and then Cena proposing to Nikki. Yeah, three really memorable moments on this show. And now they're talking about the proposal. Uh, it was funny. You can hear the you can hear a woman screaming in the crowd, a woman crying. And I guess that was the closest they've ever come to the Macho Man Miss Elizabeth uh, moment. But not like that. But that was actually a really cool moment to watch that. Um, obviously, the fan, a lot of the fans, some of them are, uh, some of the women are crying on the on the show, and I thought it was a really good moment the way uh, they did it there. I mean, especially they were hyping it up on Total Divas, the first season. I saw the first season, didn't watch any other episodes. It's been the whole thing, so uh, it made sense. And I feel that whole storyline was just for Total Divas, but uh, it definitely was a successful storyline. So yeah, they're really putting that moment over. Now they're going to uh, Rollins and Triple H. They showed an awful, pathetic highlights of that Randy Orton Bray Wyatt fucking disaster of a match. What a horrible fucking match that was! And they quickly go to uh, go through Goldberg and Brock, and uh, not too much there. Um, they, they already had a twenty-four documentary on Goldberg, so I think Goldberg and Kurt were in this documentary too much because uh, they already had their own documentaries during like WrestleMania thirty-three weekends and around WrestleMania, uh, so they weren't uh, heavily featured. But uh, next, uh, I think we're going to talk about Rollins and Triple H. And they go to Rollins backstage after the match. I thought that match was just boring. That match bored me to tears. I did not like it. I mean, the cool spot was definitely going through a table, but that was a boring match in my opinion. And again, it's kind of cool how they show Undertaker out of character in this uh, documentary. And now this main event time. Man, this main event was no good. That was a horrible match. It wasn't Roman Reigns' fault, even though I don't like him. Uh, he can't be blamed for that. I mean, Taker just couldn't move. And they keep the, the story they tell is like this old guy getting beat up, and it was in the audience that just hates Roman Reigns and they don't want to take or lose. And oh man, that match was just I thought that match sucked. So, yeah, that was the show um, when the match ended. Of course, Undertaker has that huge send off, and 
Well, he hasn't confirmed anything if he's wrestling at WrestleMania 34, and it's where he lost a streak in New Orleans, but um, I don't know. It looks like he is. And this match, I mean, you can look at it two ways. A match, he, he's had like a million great matches. This was not a good match to go on. It was a bad match, but the send-off was awesome. The way he was sent off was just incredible. He goes down into... The way it was all done, I thought, was great. They showed Taker getting up, and it was a great moment. You know, he takes the gloves off, puts them in the middle of the ring, he takes the coat off, uh, puts it on top of the gloves and the hat, and he just leaves it in the ring, and he, like, you know, walks up the ramp, and it lowers him down into hell, and, you know, there's fire coming up. It's such a great ending. When he's lowered down, um, you know, it's kind of cool when they go right away. They see what happens after. And uh, they show him in the end, you know, he hugs Triple H, and, you know, he's walking down, and he says, I'm content walking uh, into the sunset, we'll see what tomorrow brings, and to me, when I mean, he's coming back, I think he's wrestling again for sure, I don't think this is the end of The Undertaker, I think we're going to see him again. So it ends in a music video uh, recapping the whole show, and, you know, the final scene is Undertaker being lowered down, and, uh, you know... It looks like it's. Uh, I think he should have retired. I think it would have been a great way to retire, even though he, you know, he deserves to go out on a better match and a better storyline altogether. But um, yeah, he's coming back. Uh, but to look at WrestleMania 33 as a show, uh, I thought the documentary was good. Uh, some of the other documentaries they've done for WrestleMania have done better. It even says it was probably the weakest. I liked the 30 documentary a lot because that was actually a really great show. This wasn't a great show. It was a memorable show. He had a lot of cool moments, but it wasn't great. Uh, 30 was great, and that documentary was the first W24 was really good. Um, and same thing with 31. That documentary was also really good. I enjoyed that one too. Um, 32, um, the show wasn't very good at all. That was a problem. That was not. This was, 33 was a better show than 32, but 32, I thought that documentary was really good. It was a lot more in-depth with a lot of the wrestlers. And this one, I don't know. I thought it was a decent documentary. It was a decent show. WrestleMania 33 had a lot of good moments. Uh, it wasn't a great wrestling show by any means, but um, in, tr- in terms of moments, yeah, it had a lot of cool WrestleMania moments. It was a fun show. Um, but um, overall, I, again, another good documentary for uh, WWE 24. And, um Another one I'd recommend watching. All their WD24s are almost always really good, and this was another uh, good show.